Today's guests are Patrick Duffy, chair of Troy Hill Citizens, and Pittsburgh-based artist and muralist Brian Ganella. I'm Ashley Green with the Northside Chronicle channel on PCTV and for today's episode we are in Troy Hill at the Everyone Belongs in Troy Hill mural on the side of Scratch Food and Beverage and I'm here today with Patrick Duffy who's of the Troy Hill Citizens and Brian Ganella who is a Pittsburgh based artist and muralist who painted this mural. So I'd like to start with Patrick. Um, this mural has been up for a little bit over a year now. So what was it that um, initially drew the Troy Hill citizens to wanting to paint a mural here and this in mural in particular? Yes, yeah, so it, it all happened kind of out of luck um, in a little bit. It happened through kind of a mutual acquaintance. So Brian um, kind of got word that Don Mahaney, who owns Scratch Food and Beverage, um, had an available wall and was looking to put some art on it. Uh, he came in and talked with Don. Don knows me as being a, just a mutual neighbor um, and, and knew that you know I could maybe help you know reach out to the community and, and help with the fundraising. So it really came out of the blue. Uh, we're always looking for new ways to put public art in the neighborhood. Um, we think it's a great benefit for everyone that lives here and people who visit, particularly this kind of mural where it kind of shows you what's in a neighborhood. Um, so we're excited by that and that's really how it came to be. Okay, great. And what is, for people that don't know, what is Troy Hill Citizens and how did you get involved with that group? Yeah. So um, Troy Hill Citizens, it's referred to as a CDC, a Community Development Corporation. It's been around for, I think, 45 years. Um, it's gone through kind of its peaks and valleys the same way as neighborhoods have. But essentially, it's just um, an elected board that represents the neighborhood, that interfaces with the city um, in terms of getting grants or um, forwarding complaints, you know, potholes or, or various issues that residents might have that would kind of elevate with the city. Um, so I personally got involved just through a volunteer event. I think it was a tree planting um, volunteer event one time. Just kind of got asked to join the board and I joined maybe three years ago and, and that's kind of where I am, where I came from. And now you're the chair of Troy Hill Citizens. Yeah, yeah. Now, now I'm the chair with, with all the responsibilities, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, and as I understand it, this mural started as a GoFundMe campaign. Do you want to talk about that, Patrick? Or Brian, would you like to talk about that? Probably either of us are equipped to talk about it. Pat. Pat was pretty instrumental in, in helping the GoFundMe, like, you know, work. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was my idea to use crowdsourcing as a way to fund the mural. Okay. And what is it about crowdsourcing that draws you in? Uh, I mean, crowdsourcing is nice because, like, you don't, you know, you don't need to be at the behest of any kind of, like, you know, big capital to get something done. And you can use people power to uh, make projects into reality. Okay, great. And Brian, could you talk about this mural, the concept of it, and um, how you went about getting the inspiration for it? Sure. Um, so this, this mural is a, a part of um, a series of murals that I've actually done, uh, I guess, internationally now. The last one that recently uh, was in uh, Fakatani, New Zealand. But it's, it's just basically about capturing um, the spirit of a, of a community and, and the location and uh, kind of I injecting it with a sense of like you know whimsy and fun and basically giving people a chance to reflect on where they live uh, and sort of internalize it with that kind of sense uh, and I think it makes them more excited to you know walk the streets and explore their own community uh, when they have this sort of like m magic uh, framework to place it in. Okay great thank you and also I heard that when you were setting up the mur mural, you were studying the Google Maps and the landmarks of Troy Hill. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, with these murals, Google Maps is uh, an essential tool. Uh, you get the layout uh, and the general idea of like where everything is. Um, I know Troy Hill pretty well. I have a few friends that live up here, and I've always really liked this neighborhood. 
So some of the more prominent landmarks like um, St. Anthony's uh, Cathedral and, and um, Scratch and the Fire Hall here, I already knew existed. So I wanted to incorporate those uh, as well. And then some of the places that ended up on the map uh, got there through the GoFundMe process where businesses could contribute a certain amount of money um, to be prominently featured uh, somewhere in the mural. Interesting. And what is it about murals? I know you've done other type of art. Um, what is it about murals that you like as a medium? Um, I, I like murals because uh, you know they're they're free for the public and they sort of like transcend the um, artist gallery sort of like environment um, and it's something that everybody can kind of enjoy at their own time and their own leisure uh, walking by to work or just on their daily like errands or whatever um, and it's just out here for everybody to see it doesn't require uh, you know dressing up and going out on a gallery crawl night or you know any kind of like purchase to see it you know and they all get to have some sort of sense of ownership because it's part of their neighborhood now Okay. Um, this, like I said earlier, has been up for a year now, a little over a year. So what has the community reception been like? Well, when I was, when I was painting it, the community reception was just stellar. It was like nonstop thumbs up and good job. And everybody was just cruising by in their two cents and, um, you know, being really supportive generally. And then when the mural was done, we had a block party here in which like the whole neighborhood was invited out and we just kind of cooked burgers and some food uh, and everybody got to like, you know, take a, take the mural in and, the, you know, a lot of kids were like looking at it and pointing out, oh, that could be my house, like that's where I live. And it was just kind of uh, really rewarding to see the community engage with it in that kind of way. So that was like the, the stated goal of the project and I think it landed. Great. And Patrick, have you heard from residents in Troy Hill about this mural? What's what's the reception been like on your end? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think overall, um, very positive. And we did this for a couple different reasons. Um, you know, one for obviously just residents' enjoyment. You know, as Brian alluded to, people like kind of seeing where they fit into the puzzle of a neighborhood. Um, we also did this kind of in conjunction with a, a project of trying to restart the business association up here. So as Brian alluded to, um, you know, businesses could kind of have a say in how they're represented on the map. And this way, if someone's new to the neighborhood, say they're thinking about moving here, or they're coming to one of the, the businesses up here, they can really see you know, not only where they are relative to the neighborhood, but what, el what all else is up here. We're trying to make more of a make a day out of Troy Hill feeling. So if someone comes to Scratch Food and Beverage, they also know, oh, well, there's St. Anthony's down the street, or there's a community garden down the street. And they can kind of get a feel that you won't get necessarily from Google Maps, but you can get in this format kind of, you know, up close and personal. Um, and then generally, yeah, the block party, um, great turnout. Um, you know, it, it gave us that platform to kind of bring everyone together, true to the name of the mural of, of having, you know, anyone that was walking down the street could just stop in the block party, chat it up, um, get their picture taken with it. And I think just generally this has a lasting effect in the neighborhood. Um, I'm just kind of helping people near the neighborhood get a sense of what is Troy Hill because I think a lot of people don't still don't really know what is Troy Hill or what's up in Troy Hill. Yeah and um, Brian for the the work days that you spent could you talk a little bit about um, the actual process and logistics of putting the mural together? Yeah we uh, I had a, a friend of mine who was assisting me and we were out here maybe for like um, a week, a week and a half straight, uh, just pretty much painting like when we had daylight. Um, so the mural is done with uh, spray paint and a, acrylic paint pen. So uh, we got the preliminary image up there first and then it was sort of like a, a color by numbers, um, you know, until it was done basically. Uh, and it was great because uh, Scratch fed us every day. <laughs> so we got to eat their food uh, for free, um, you know, whenever we were hungry basically. So like I we couldn't have asked for a more accommodating host. Do you have a favorite part of the mural? Um, yeah, I kind of like George Washington sticking out of the ground, uh, representing Washington's Landing, which is uh, like adjacent to Troy Hill, but in the middle of the river um, at the bottom of Rialto. Uh, and then I, I also kind of just like um, the main section, sort of like where we're standing at, which I guess would be over there too, uh, just because uh, it, it was where we were and that was kind of got uh, a lot of uh, attention to detail because of that. So I think I came out as one of the cooler sections of the map. 
Patrick, what is going on in Troy Hill Citizens now? What are you looking forward to in the future? Yeah, so we, we have a couple really big events coming up in the fall um, that we're focused on. Um, we were one of four neighborhoods selected for the Steps We Take um, public art event. It's going to be kind of a, a call to attention of the, the condition of the city steps, and it's done with in coordination with the Greater Pittsburgh Arts Council and Bike Pittsburgh. Um, it's going to be a two-week festival um, in Troy Hill and around the city, celebrating our steps with um, a combination of different types of art styles, from fashion to visual art to audio art. Um, that's going to be the weekend of October 11th, 12th, and 13th. And in coordination with that, on the 12th, we're going to be having our annual Pictoberfest, which is a block party, community block party. So um, those are, you know, two opportunities if you haven't been up to Troy Hill and want to kind of get the Troy Hill experience, um, particularly because the steps are uh, a essential part of the neighborhood, a, a gigantic asset to the neighborhood. Um, definitely come check those out. Great. Thank you. Um, and Brian, is there anything coming up that you would like to plug or how can people find you and learn more about your art? Well, you can um, find me on Instagram at uh, Brian Ganella is boring. I uh, don't want to oversell myself too much. Um, and I have an event um, coming up this Saturday that I curate at uh, Spirit Bar in Lawrenceville, which is a, uh, a, a live painting mural event in which um, I think we got six six Pittsburgh muralists uh, on the roster. We'll be painting all day during Spirit Summer Recess event, which is like a huge block party where they close down 51st Street and have a bunch of vendors and bands out and stuff. So we'll be uh, adding to that fun. So if if you're into watching street art and you're curious about um, the nascent street art scene here in in Pittsburgh, that would be a good event to come out to Saturday all day, on the 24th. Patrick, how can people find out about Troy Hill Citizens and get involved? Yeah, so um, we have a couple ways uh, that we reach out. We're in the, our meetings are in the church bulletin. Uh, we post flyers around the neighborhood itself. Um, if you're not in Troy Hill or, or more of a social media person, we have a website at troyhillpittsburgh.com. We also have a, a page on Facebook. So, um, and also, if you go to our website, you can sign up to be on our uh, e-newsletter. So those are the best ways to reach us. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Brian and Patrick. Once again, I'm Ashley Green, Managing Editor of the Northside Chronicle. You can find more out about us at thenorthsidechronicle.com. And we'll catch you on the next episode.